the burden of trying to do it on your own. So I strongly urge you, I strongly urge you to get into a group or form a group that works. Right? Form a group that works, that can help each other as you're revising stuff, you know, from week one, week two, you're preparing for next week's session. You know, please find some time um, to, to meet with your group. And I always tell students, this is an age of technology. I have meetings with people from uh, Africa. I have meetings with people from China because all we need to do is to do a Skype meeting. You know, you can do a Skype meeting. You can do a WhatsApp meeting. So there's many ways you can have virtual meetings. So you don't necessarily have to come down campus to study. So if you're doing your case analysis, people can agree what time in the evening you're going to meet, convenient to everyone, and just going to Skype. And you can have a Skype meeting with four, five, six, or seven persons, right? I planned an international conference for some African scholars, and we planned it for a whole year, and we never met in person. It was hosted here, and I was the coordinator of the conference, an international conference. And we had meetings, long meetings, with persons from all over Africa. Uh, I'm serious. We had two-hour meetings. And all we did was to meet for Skype. It was a very successful academic conference. So I'm saying as students, you can meet regularly on Skype. It's late night you like to meet, and you can determine the times that are best. So you don't have to be catching bus and trying to get people. And it's always a challenge sometimes to get people to leave home to come to a space, right? So in lunch, you can have a meeting at lunchtime. You talk, have a half-hour meeting. And you, go, you, know, you can find a quiet space, and people can log in, and you still have a meeting. So please make full use of the technology. Now, the, as we go into this session, I want to urge you folks that the best way for you to learn in this session, since strategy is going to call for a new way of thinking about preparing for your exam, ask as much questions as possible that be interactive. So if it's something I say you're not clear about what I did earlier, if I say something that doesn't make sense, just tell me, you're not coming, but I'm not, I, I'm not clear, I'm not, I'm not understanding. Or what you say, I say is not correct. Because I'm not perfect. You know, I can make an error. So if I say something that is wrong, and you think it is wrong, you know, don't be fearful. You know, I don't have a problem with students correcting me. Right? Some other lecturers might, but I have no problem if a student say to me, and put your hand up in class, you don't, you don't have to be shy about it. Dr. Corbett, I don't think that is correct. And I can check the text or check. And if you bring it to my attention, I say thank you very much. Right? Because I am also learning too. Right? I don't pretend that I'm an encyclopedia, that I'm perfect. So I want to repeat, you know, we are, we are here to you as partners. We are part of an assertive education. I can learn from you, and I've learned from a lot of students over the years, just as you can learn from me. So please get involved in the discussions, the interactions. And as I said, in any case, if you don't, I will find you, and I look for people who don't say much, and I urge them to say something. Right? And it's good for you, because I put it simply like this, right? If you think you know something and you never tried it, you really don't know if you know it. You see what I'm saying? So the best way for you to test your knowledge and understanding of what you're going to be with in the course is for you to be able to be part of a discussion and begin to verbalize. Because the only way you can speak about something is if you, the only way you can intelligently speak about something is if you, if you understand it. If you don't understand it, you can't speak about it intelligently. So test your knowledge and understanding of the various concepts and strategy, and I agree there are going to be a lot of concepts. That's why I say, set up a little section in your notebooks that, say, uh, that says glossary. And when we introduce new words and new phrases, these are key phrases, the jargon of strategy that you really need to be able to, to know. So the first thing is definitions. And definitions are very powerful things that I urge you to learn. So today might be one of the longest lecturers where I'm going to deal with some foundational concepts to this new subject that you're getting into called business strategy and policy or strategic management. So this is a definition that talks about the art of developing vision and mission. So from your management courses, everybody here knows what a vision is, correct? So my friend here, what's your name? Hmm? Nicole, what's a 
vision. Target the mission. The vision is what I plan to do or to become in the future. And the mission is how they plan to do it, right? So the mission is the purpose. What do we plan to do to achieve this dream to be? Some people have Florida language. The, 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 the highest quality provider, the number one producer of X. And then how do you do it is the mission. We will provide tables and chairs that will last for 50 years. So, so the mission is the specifics about the services that you would offer. And you're saying converting them into strategic objectives, and these are objectives long term, that are measurable and to formulate, implement, and evaluate the the various strategies. So there are three stages in strategic management, right? Three important stages, which will be the stage of strategy formulation, one, two, strategy implementation, and the third is strategy evaluation. Three phases in strategic management, and this is what this course covers. Strategy formulation, strategy implementation, and strategy evaluation. Now, but in this course, most of your testing, a greater percentage of your testing will be on strategy formulation, followed by implementation and evaluation maybe just a little bit, but most of the assessment in this course in both the coursework and exam will be focused on formulation and analysis and uh, then followed by implementation. We may or may not have a little, little bit on evaluation. So we say strategic management is your game plan. Again, for all these notes on, on web, it's a game plan and uh, it is this game plan that a company develops in response to the environment. All that environment we talked about, strategy is based on political and legal assessments, economic assessments, social, cultural, technological, environmental, the competitive forces. It is only after you have done your pest analysis followed by your SWOT analysis and some other tools we'll introduce to you that you are able then to say, well, let's develop our strategies based. But the analysis has to be done first, which I know you would have done a similar thing in marketing. So this is a management concept now that in management, we know there's some core functions of management, the finance and accounting functions, right? the HR function, the production function, marketing, research and development, et cetera, et cetera. So these functions in organizations are utilized to do what? Why do you set up these functions? In relation to strategy, what would these functions, why would they be relevant? How do those, these functions become relevant? So, correct. So what would happen, you have set up these strategic objectives and all of these strategies, organizations then utilize these core functions to implement the strategy. So the, your management function or HR function, your MIS, the finance and accounting is there, right? All of these functions help you to implement your strategy. So strategy formulation, as I said, which is the main section of the course, and how much is the textbook available? Anybody check that? David, Fred David. Sorry. Please go check and see if the textbook is available. So you have the concept of vision and mission, which will all be, still be relevant now. We will do external, the SWOT analysis, looking at your opportunities, strengths, your strengths and weaknesses, and then looking at objectives, looking at strategies, and um, the selecting the most appropriate strategy. So formulation deals a lot with analysis and determining the types of strategies that the company could utilize. And then you have now stage of implementation, which is now we have strategies, we're going to implement those strategies. So as I said, most of the course, when you look at the course outline, about 
maybe 80% of the course outline is made up of issues of formulation, all different tools and techniques and models. And then we have maybe the, the, the balance, most of it dealing with the issue of implementation. And a very small section of the course, course outline deals with evaluation. So I want to emphasize and stress that a critical part of the course as we get into the different sections and various tools of analysis is understanding the model that we discussed first, the environment of business and how the organization functions within the environment of business. Right? And those forces, how those forces impact on a business. So what it means, folks, it means that by next week, the average student should know and be comfortable with one, the environment of business, and you know the environment these with PESEL, so you should know your PESEL analysis, you should know your SWAN analysis. And you should know your five forces analysis. These are three things by next week that you should have gone and refreshed your memory that you know all. In other words, next week, one of the first things we'll do is to come to touch on a swap for revision and a five forces analysis. Give a sample of that. So these are three things you really should know very well. And you should know by heart and understand the core elements of the five forces model, which would be suppliers, customers, competing firms, etc., and how it works, right? and how it works. So the first part of the course um, deals with internal and external assessment, right? With internal and external assessment. So For next week, we will look at the external assessment, and I will tell you up front there are a number of tools that I want you to read up on in, a, an, in advance for the external assessment. And these are one we call the SWOT, of course, and the five forces, but this is a tool that David developed called the External Factor Evaluation Matrix. The External Factor Evaluation Matrix. Please read ahead. It's in the text. Uh, there's something on it actually in the notes for next week. So you can go to the notes. It gives how it is structured. So I want you to pay attention to how the EFE is structured, the components of an EFE, and the rating of an EFE will be very important. And I will give you the sample of the EFE next week, and we'll have an interactive discussion on how it works, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, we will also use another tool from David, time allowing, if time does not allow, we will defer it. That is something called a competitive profile matrix. A CPM, competitive profile matrix, all found in the notes for next week. We will also next week look at the CPM. And I repeat the structure ratings and contents of the CPM and I believe most of you will not be familiar with these tools. 
competitive profile matrix. So what it does, it compares one firm with its key competitors to determine the extent to which it is more competitive than those persons um, the company competes against within the particular industry or sector. Any questions on those? So I said for next week, these are the things I would expect average students to come to the period to discuss and having read ahead these two new tools that you would find in the text and also within the notes. But the text would give you further details and information. Now, we already introduced this concept of competitive advantage. So I want you again to read upon it that when you come next week, at least you're au fait and knowledgeable about what um, competitive advantage. And it's just saying anything a firm does better or more excellently uh, when compared to its competitors. And a sustainable competitive advantage is when you do it consistently over time. You can have a one-off advantage, but you want that advantage to be sustained over time. So if you look at competing car companies, Simpson Motors and others, um, or competing airlines, you have JetBlue, you have American. One time, American Airlines dominated travel from Barbados to the US. But now JetBlue is, is the wave, you know? Very, very early morning flights, but again, more spacious, right? Low prices, comfortable, I find. I, I enjoy service by, uh, from JetBlue. So again, so American has gone down a little ranks. It's not as powerful as the other companies. So you see what we are saying here, adopting to changes in external trends and internal capabilities. So again, folks, please make a, make a note that one of the critical things flowing through this course will be external impacts, internal reactions, right? External impacts, internal reactions consistently. So a lot of what we deal with, the tools, the techniques and models, will be dealing with external impacts, external forces, and impacts the internal responses, right? Um, that internal-external relationship is one that's going to come up a lot. So for the third point, we are saying that competitive advantage is about your attracting customers. So this is something we know, right? So you have competing fast food companies, and I suppose sometimes students are running from class to class, studying long hours. So a lot of what you eat sometimes is a, a burger, fast food, and maybe working people also. You go to the kiosk or the, re or the restaurant. So how do Companies like Chaffet, Kentucky, the chicken barn down there, the other fellow, what's the other barbecue guy down there? TNT, right? So you have choices. You can go to TNT, you can go at the kiosk here, you can go in the student restaurant, the staff restaurant, the little um, shop up the hill, you can go to chicken barn down the hill, you can go to the automart, and I see students in all of these, you can go up. So you have choices because they are attracting customers. They know the university is around and they, they assume university students will buy stuff to eat. They want loyalty. Right? People want loyalty for people to buy again, repeat sales. They want people to come again and come again. So why would somebody choose one competitor over another? You want to outcompete your rivals. So folks, so strategy, I say, is always re it's really real life. It's something we live every day. When you go to the gas station to buy gas, when you go to buy food, when you go in the bookshop, there are other places that sell stationery too. So that's what strategy about. How does a company get customers or buyers to prefer them over others? What strategies can they utilize to get them to buy, um, to give them this advantage over others? So think everyday life as you read the newspapers and you will see strategy living around you. 
We dealt with that vision and mission are concepts that also come up in this course a lot. So everybody should know the differences between vision and mission. If you forgot, go back to your notes and read them up. So one is what you want to become, the other is what you do. We dealt with scanning the environment. Let me see the other important concepts I want to bring to your attention. Well, these are just some examples of the kind of strategies that we'll be touching in on the course, in this course, and these are strategies that I'm sure you would have dealt with in your marketing course. I'm um, looking at the geographic expansion, which could be also called market development. You have diversification. We have acquisition, uh, market penetration, liquidation, retrenchment, joint venture. Right. So how does liquidation differ from divestiture? How does liquidation differ from divestiture? You would have done financial management, right? <laughs> what is liquidation? What is divestiture? Sorry? What's divestiture? When you divest, what happens when you divest? Sorry? In different areas? You warm anybody what they have? Correct. He says you have five different business units. Suppose you have five gas stations. One is losing money. You make a decision, I'm going to shut down the one that's making money. I'm not shutting down my gas station business. I'm just shutting down the plant in Hastings that is losing money for whatever reason, right? And that's divesting. Or I have a diversified business. I have a shoe company, a clothes company, or wash a, a, a laundromat, and I sell used cars, and I determine that this used car business isn't making money anymore, so I shut down my used car business. That is, I am divesting. Liquidation now is I'm shutting down everything to get as much money that I can get. To do what? When you liquidate, what do you have to do when you liquidate? I got to say, I need to pay the people I owe so they don't put me in court. So I liquidate, shut down, sell off everything, and I use my cash. Right. So these are terms, folks, that are and concepts of business that will be heavily utilized in this course also. Well, this is a bit busy, right? but, <laughs> but it basically says that you do your external assessment, which looks at the environmental business, your pestle and your SWOT and your five forces and all of those. This is the internal assessment where I look at the, with what, would be, what would give me my internal assessment? What tool gives me my internal assessment? Not the SWOT analysis, the strengths and weaknesses of the SWOT. So the strengths and weaknesses of the SWOT will give me my internal issues and my internal assessment, a lot, a lot of stuff I need. And all it says, based on the vision and mission, the company can have its long-term objectives. And uh, then it could look at, because I have done an environmental analysis, I, I looked at all the forces, all the competitors, market trends, customer needs, I have now chosen the best strategies. And since I've chosen the best strategies, I can now implement those strategies utilizing the various functions, and then I can evaluate. And that's all the course is about. Right? That's all the course is. Yes, sir? Why is it less likely to be enforced than an evaluation? Right. The question is, why is less emphasis laid on evaluation? Because evaluation in itself could be a topic in itself. Huh? The exam is only two hours. In project management, 
I know they deal with issues of project evaluation, which is looking at costs and you know, um, efficiencies and things like that. So I'm not sure the extent to which the, I know there's a project management course. So I don't know how many students will have done project management. Right, yeah, but project management I mean, might be an elective for students, you see. Yeah, so it's just that you can't deal with everything. Um, so I think that for the purpose of being just a final year course, that the issue of developing strategy, formulation strategy, and implementing might be more critical to the students. Yeah. So this really gives you the synopsis of the course. Right? Uh, as I said, it's a lot of stuff to be covered, but, but as I said before, the preamble we gave for those who came in late, the course is capstone, which means you come in with the body of knowledge to cover 90% of what is here. There's some new concept that David will introduce, that we will introduce to you, like the IFP and the CPM and the EFP and a couple other models down that you wouldn't have dealt with before. So I will do a lecture to introduce you to those concepts and so you understand them well. But other than that, most of the concepts you need to know, you would have covered. Now, I know that a lot of students run from the, um, the finance and accounting aspect of it. When you look at the cases, the cases in the text are very comprehensive cases. And in fact, I actually have, there are two online, uh, the two that you will get in the tutorial, so if you want to go and look at them, you can. But the cases are very comprehensive, some 15, 20 pages. But there's always a body of financial information in these cases. And you really can't run a business or develop strategy without considering the financial and accounting data. So there's a lot of accounting data. So we, within the course and the exam, there's always a component that deals with financial management and financial ratio analysis specifically. So if you are not a strong student in finance or accounting or financial ratio analysis, I urge you again from now week one, please find some time to network with a student that is an accounting student that can make you quite au fait. And it's not difficult, it's just a matter of you know, doing the, the readings and studying and um, helping yourselves to understand. And I, I will also urge again the accounting students, we always have a, 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 a a, a, a particular high percentage of accounting and finance students since the course is compulsory for management students. So for those accounting and finance students who are good, I urge you to find time for the students that are not accounting and finance students to help them where they need help in understanding the ratio analysis or the accounting statements. Yeah? It's your job and duty to help your colleagues in that area um, of the course. Any other questions? I like questions coming from students. There's no question that is a foolish question. So I always like you to be asking questions for me to, to get clarity about anything. So folks, the last thing I would say is remember, as I said, the research has shown where students read ahead in the course, there's a higher probability that you would retain things in permanent memory and learn. So for next week's session, Please read up on uh, the section deal, dealing with the external assessment, and that's what we'll be dealing with in class next time. If you have any questions one-on-one, -on -one, please come to me after. Have a good day and a good afternoon. Oh, and tutorials begin next week. Not this week. Tutorials begin next week. You had um, discussions online last year. Are you having them this year? I would just have it as... Um, Interaction for students to learn. Yes, okay, yes. All right, madam. Have a good day. Good. Right, right, yes. Give me a minute.